really nice when you have a uh, the Sunday off and and then you spend some time with family because you know I live alone and I don't spend a whole lot of time with my kids except on the phone because they're busy building their lives. They all have uh, uh, businesses. Well, my daughter's still in college, but she's trying to get, you know, she started her uh, real estate career at the same time as, you know, starting her dental hygienist um, program. She finished all her prerequisites, blah, 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 and she's got to get into that. In the meantime, she's learning her commercial license. At, uh, her brothers paid for her and her boyfriend to go. So hopefully she'll, she'll start to build that so she can have a more um, a family life with more time with her kids. In any case, um, so it was your birthday, and then um, and that was uh, Friday, right? Was that Friday? Saturday. Yeah. Oh, Saturday. I came to your house on Friday. That's why. Yeah, it's the day before my son's birthday. And then on Sunday was my son's birthday, so I went out to his house because I don't see them that much. So. You know, there's just nothing like, and, and you're with your family all the time, every day, day in and day out, <laughs> yeah. and you're performing. And when I came up there on Friday and I was like, oh my gosh, poor, poor Jeanette, you know, I have the, I have the solace and the quiet of my home. And I just, I feel so bad because, you know, even when I took care of my mother, I didn't really take care of her because she did everything for herself until the day before she went in the hospital and then into hospice. My mother was an extremely active person. You know, she was always walking and unlike me who will just sit, my mother is a mover and that's the way my daughter, well, my daughter was when she was younger, but my, my younger son is, he doesn't stop walking. You're on the phone with him. He starts pacing. It's so annoying to watch him. But anyway, uh, because I'm a sitter and I focus, you know, because I have ADD, I want to focus, focus, focus. But anyway, so there's nothing like getting away with your family to regenerate you on Sundays. Sundays is our day, the Lord's Day, um, which went from the Sabbath to the Lord's Day. But regeneration of friends and family give us a little an extra pep in our step, you yeah. know, when we have a little restoration time, right? Uh, and that's why God said the seventh day to rest, you know, and that's why we had the Sabbath until Jesus fulfilled uh, the covenant, the, co the new covenant. Um, so anyway, I came to your house to bring you a spiritual war warfare rosary. Yes, I um, did. And you gave me three. <laughs> One... <laughs> that I'm really, like, I love them all, but one that I'm really excited about was the Seven Sorrows. I think it's this one, right? It's this yeah, one. It has, it has yeah. seven instead of five. Right, and it's, uh, and so um, seven times seven, right? Yes. Is it seven times 10? Is it seven times seven? Instead of 10, yes. Okay, um, okay, so, um, I thought this is a nice rosary where we could do it um, on days maybe like 9-11, you know. Yeah. That's um, especially sorrowful days for our country. Uh, maybe something happen, happening in the, in the modern culture that we are particularly, you know, and when we watch the news because um, the more I pray to, for God to help me to keep negativity out of my my life as much as possible to focus on God. I miss some things because I don't always watch the news. Some days I don't watch, especially if something's getting done at my house or whatever, you know, in any case, when we think of it, when something in modern culture pops up and we want to um, pray about it, the seven sorrows and uniting in, uniting with Mary and Christ in our, in our sufferings as, because like you, you may not remember, or you may not have seen, but um, it, they, people prayer gathered in Washington, D.C. This in, you know, the other day, I don't know the exact day. Um, I wasn't even aware of it until I saw it on um, one of the priests um, Facebook, who uh, I guess one of his friends or whatever. Um, and so I think they played the piano. So I looked at it because my daughter-in-law plays, plays, the, plays the piano. And I was like, oh, you know, so I thought maybe it'd be something I would share with her. But in any case, 
um, he shared it. And so I looked into it and it, 50,000 people wow. went to the steps of the Capitol and Vice President Mike Pence came out as a surprise and joined them. So I, I thought it was just such a beautiful representation of uh, all the Christian brothers and sisters of, you know, den the dom denominations of the protesters. That's okay. They have pieces of the truth and they are standing up for Christ and they are saying that's what this country was initially built on was freedom of to worship as you choose. So that just hit me. So today during rosary, I received a tremendous amount of insight that I can't share, but I'm going to save this link because there will come a time where I will share it. Um, but when I, when, when we first started this morning, this is how the Holy spirit works for in me, for me. Um, I did not plan on reading the 15 promises granted to those who faithfully recite the most holy rosary. I did not plan on that. When, when I started that camera, when I started that, did not plan on that. It, it came immediately to me every Monday. I need to read this. And that's how I believe that the Holy spirit works through us in, in the rosary. And then during, um, rosary, I received insights on something that I've been trying to develop for probably 10 years. And the answer came to me in the rosary. And someday I'll share that with you. I'm going to save this link. Um, in any case, as we went through, um, the, um, the rosary today, um, it was on the first, on the, on the very first, uh, rosary we had, or the very first mystery, we had talked about the spiritual fruits and announcing them, which you do, um, during each, um, thing you announce the, the spirit, the, um, the, uh, um, the event, the annunciation, then the spiritual fruit, humility, and then, you know, you say the first joyful mystery, the Annunciation, the spiritual fruit. Okay. So when you came to that, um, and as we went through each of these intentions for each Hail Mary, our intention for each one, it came to me. Um, and because so much that I love this photo. So when we are doing our Hail Mary, I try to look at it to um, draw that inspiration. And I see Mary there when she's being told by the angel, you're going to bear a child. And then when you do our, um, our, our root in Christ for each Hail Mary and you say, the angel assures her, fear not. Cause she's like, but I want to be chased. And she's in, in our picture on our, on our sheets, she is, at her, um, she's at a podium, um, at, you know, like a prayer podium or not a podium, wrong word. Her, her, her prayer, um, you know, where you kneel. I had one of those when I could kneel, um, which I gave to my son. Um, but, uh, you kneel on it and it's like, it's got, you know, whatever fabric or whatever. And that way you can kneel down. So she's at her kneeling, um, uh, I forget what they call them, but not podium, but a little kneeling thing. So when I, when I looked at her and I, I, when you do the root in Christ in our spiritual warfare rosary, you do the 10, uh, rooting in Christ, um, things. And so when we got to that and I, uh, look at the picture and I look apart from a humility and Mary's humility, because we all have a plan in our life, right? But if we follow God's plan for us, if we stay rooted in Christ, we will respond to the Holy Spirit's prompting, because that's what the Holy Spirit does to us. He prompts us to action, whatever that action may be in our lives specifically. So when when he prompted Mary what was happening, she 
is the perfect model of humility. She said, yes, that was that. That's why um, in some of our protesters, they don't understand the role of Mary and Mary. We are supposed to unite with Christ, right? Well, Christ is made of half of his DNA comes from Mary, the other half from God. He, you know, even the DNA that they've studied in, um, in the, the host, um, they have found that there is no, um, there is no Y uh, chromosome that belong, you know, that is of man. So, okay, so um, when we uh, unite with Jesus, we are uniting with 50% with Mary's DNA, okay? So we, there are some parts to Christ that we are not going to be, you know, he's perfect, okay? But with Mary, she was a human being. And although she was, um, uh, she was saved from original sin um, from the beginning through an immaculate conception, she was still fully human like we are. Christ was half human, half divine, right? Mary was fully human. So we need to understand her humility. It, she is easier for us to, um, now there's very little in the Bible about Mary, but that's because she was so humble and she was so united with Christ, right? So we have to unite with Christ in humility. And it's something you have recently in the last few weeks really been focusing on in your readings. I don't know if you watch Jeanette's readings daily, but when she told me she was exhausted, you know, and she was like, you know what? I think I'm just going to do the whatever, because again, she takes care of her mother. She cooks for four or five people daily, three meals a day. And, you know, she gets help from her children. Her children are amazing. You know, I, I can't see my kids being as, you know, but my kids are good kids. I'm not saying they aren't, but I'm going to tell you something. You have taught your kids something of service that I think I miss in my kids. Anyway, so uh, my kids do serve, though. I'm not saying that. They are very loving and giving. And like, you know, my daughter gives, you know, $20 to a homeless couple with a baby. And, you know, my son, when he was a little tiny boy at camp, he would give his um, half of his food to a homeless man. You know, uh, I caught him doing it. It scared me. But anyway, um, so that's what came to me during the, the, um, the first uh, mystery of the rosary. And then um, when we got to the second one was where what happened, an insight came to me that I will share with you at a later date. Um, but during this, um, it was about abortion. And recently, uh, I changed our um, intentions um, for the ninth. Hail Mary, we usually just do for adoptive families. Well, I took the 10th one, adoptive and fostering parents and families, and put them together so that I could put in overturning Roe versus Wade, because it is actually something that is now potentially within a possibility that the pro-life movement has been working so hard and tirelessly there are people, they march for life every year. They do the, 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 um, the march for life, the 40-day march for life, and they, they march. They go sometimes across the country daily marching. The people that you don't hear about every day, because our news does not um, talk about good things. They only talk about bad things, unfortunately. But there are tireless warriors of pro-life warriors that are every day um, doing things like that, the 40 days for life, uh, sitting in front of the, the, the clinics to help hopefully, hopefully 
a girl going in to the clinic will see them and think twice and maybe think, maybe I should talk to one of these people. Maybe they'll help me. Maybe she's in a desperate situation and she thinks, I can't do this. And they sit out there in the heat of the Florida sun here. They do it up north in the cold, but down here in the Florida sun, everyone thinks, oh, I want to go to Florida and sit under the palm trees. Well, we have pro-life warriors that are on the front line sitting in the heat. Some of them bring umbrellas. I see them when I drive, uh, uh, when I drive past this particular clinic um, on my, you know, whatever errands. And I see them out there. I beat to them sometimes and hold up my thumb. I don't want to cause the ruckus because I don't want them to say, but I let them know we're behind you and thank you. And, you know, I, I do that. Someday I think, I should take them some, you know, some nice cool lemonade or something, you know, to, to say to them, thank you for doing this. Um, so anyway, so that came to me on here and an insight I'll share with you later. Um, because now is a time where we, it is actually in the potential possibility because of the Supreme Court that the, the Roe versus Wade was not based properly. And there is a very real legal potential to overturn that. You know, everything in our society is on legal, just like our church has canon law. Everything is very legal. It's very technical. And it's, and it's based in a very logical, you know, human understanding sequence and that kind of thing. So that came to me. And then that was all I could think of the whole thing. So that was, you know, each, each thing I came to, I was like, okay, child, each thing, um, purity of um, the mind and body. Oh, there was one other thing. Um, uh, because I've been focusing on the spiritual fruits, um, when we came to the third poverty of spirit, I'm like, you know, I automatically, poverty of spirit doesn't necessarily mean poverty that, you know, that we think of poverty as poor. Um, poverty of spirit means something different. Um, but I thought of poverty because um, we, we um, in one of our intentions, we talk about um, uh, the poverty of um, women who do surrogacy. Well, I actually um, considered being a surrogate when I was young because there's not there because um, my son had a big brother through the big brother big sister association so i had him go with this man um and he had a wonderful wife and they couldn't have children so um they both uh volunteered the big brother and big sister association you know they were great people um they're protestants but nevertheless they were just wonderful people and so he would give his weekends um, not every weekend, it was maybe every other or whatever. He'd come and take my son and do things with him. And and so they were such good people and they were given so much to my child um, that I, I thought I should offer to be a surrogate for them that they could have their own child. I didn't know whatever their problems were. I just knew they couldn't have children and they adopted a child from um, uh, one of those, um, I forget, cops. I forget where they got their, their child right now. I, I know it, but I don't remember it. But in any case, I thought, and I'm so thankful today that I didn't because I didn't realize that was a sin because there's so much in our culture that we don't realize is sinful because our culture has indoctrinated us since we were young. And we were after Vatican II where kind of sin was thrown out. And so um, that's what, um, that came to me about poverty. And, um, and then it came to me that you, your daughter and I, and my daughter, because my daughter met your daughter on your birth, the day before your birthday, when we came up for our visit, um, when you had your whole mask and everything on. Um, but anyway, I should have got a good picture of that. But anyway, um, <laughs> um, but anyway, um, we were talking with our daughters, um, because they like some of the same shows, all the, you know, we all like some of the same shows. And, um, we talked about the Kardashians and, you know, they're being canceled and that kind of stuff. And I, and I wonder to myself, are they being canceled because our culture is shifting from that materialism? Because we talked about, um, that show and how materialistic 
And those young girls don't realize how sinful that, you know, is. Uh, one of their friends, Paris, um, has another thing that just came out that um, she talks about a trauma that happened to her. And, um, and if you look at sin, which they never address in their shows, if, if, if we were teaching our, our I, culture. Our I never watched that show. Uh, the the Kardashians. Yeah, Bina, Bina well, daughter, I think watches it. I yeah, think. yeah. And so we talked about it because um, uh, it's it's very materialistic. It's they are just immersed in materialism. Um, they're very entertaining. You know that sin sinfulness is very entertaining, and and it draws us, it tempts us to watch. So I um, so that's where some of my insight came into, and something I'll share later. Um, but, um, I wondered if we're shifting, we're not, we're, we're, you know, this is a very materialistic society. Yeah. So does their canceling of 20 seasons have an indication on a shifting of the, the energy of America away from that and more towards God? Because that, that 50,000 people that gathered in DC, they said is a, um, all the these Christians are saying that it is a, an indication of America turning back to God because of the changes. And if we get the Roe versus Wade, so all this kind of intertwines in a basket of, you know, that I'm trying to explain. So that all came to me. And then the last thing that, that um, I wanted to show this had nothing to do with the rosary. I'm done with my insights, but I get, I get so many, I can't even, I have to start, I decided I'm going to start a journal on it, and you should too, on the insights you get, even if it's one more, even if you don't get a lot, because some days we're exhausted, you know, like you, like it upset me so much when you weren't going to do your daily readings, because Jeanette's daily readings no. are, are very, stop, you know, be, you know, they are very good. You actually helped me in the liturgy of the church, you helped me to tap into that, which is what the church is supposed to do for us. So when you said that, I didn't want to influence you too much because that's a private journey. But I know it's just because you're exhausted because you do so much for your family. And I just, I prayed about it and I asked God, please, you know, inspire her to continue. Um, because the the observations or whatever it is that you read after, they, you found after a few days of doing that, it wasn't enough. And so you inspire me constantly to remember about that, which I put up a Lecto Divina for you today because I'm still oh. trying, really working hard on my yes. prayer life, which everyone that is trying to do a prayer life knows how hard it is. Just like you're doing the daily, that takes hours of your time. You start the day before, which you inspire me about trying to do that. I still, ha I still don't do it generally every day, but I, Whenever a habit, you're trying to establish a habit, you first start doing it sporadically and little by little, you start to root it. It's like a root, you know how you do yeah. your gardening, a rooting. And so you have to start a root and then slowly it becomes a daily thing. It's very hard to, to stay on good habits. So anyway, so I wanted to show this because um, you did a reading um, and, and I watched your reading that day. And then I went and looked in my scribed and it was about um, the little, the lamps. And so, oh, okay. um, yeah. And so the lamp, um, there is I, a, yeah. I, I know I go, this is the way my brain works. It goes all around and then it comes back. But anyway, so there, there was a little uh, lamp um holder that was found in jerusalem from the first time it has a picture of a um of a menorah on it and it's carved and um i was like oh my gosh i want to carve that in clay and then take that mold star 30 that silicone and pour it in that um not concrete, but it's a stone that's like concrete that the crafters use. So I thought, I want to do a little one. I want to carve it out and then um, get a little tiny lamp and put it on top because it was a lamp holder for Jerusalem. So the Mold Star 30. So, I, you know, I, I still haven't done my finished because I'm waiting on the rest of my bathroom. 
Can you hold it a little higher? Oh, I'm sorry. No, no. So, so we can see it from the words. Oh, yeah. That's beautiful. That's cute. I love yeah, I got this. Well, I got this on um, Amazon because when I make the little holder of it, the carved, the, the, um, I, I put it on there. I'll, I'll show you awesome. after. Um, but yeah, I thought I want to, I want to do a lamp holder. And I was like, but I, I'll need a little lamp. And this one has like a little candle in it. So I thought, well, I'll do a lamp holder and then I'll put it here in front of my, you know how you have your Mary with your candle to call the Holy Spirit. So I will, um, I will add that. Um, I just don't, the only thing I don't like about this is this thing isn't, doesn't stay in. So I'm going to have to work on that. But in any case, um, I'm going to do that. I know I have a lot of creative projects like you'd like to do the beads I like some of the bead stuff but um I'm going to carve that and I'll show you guys I'll show you also when I put up my rosary wall I just uh, you know I'm getting my bathroom rehabbed and for my sons they try to fit me in during their all of their um you know their own businesses so it takes That's a long time to be clean yeah so but I'll get I will I will get that rosary wall done. I now have all the components, um, all the icons, all of the beads. I have everything except one little tiny thing that I'm looking for the, the, the nails to go through are real skinny. They have to go through the beads too, which I haven't found yet. Um, but I will share with everyone and I'll also share when we do that. Um, and I shared your, your beautiful oh. things and the seven sorrows. Um, we have to start doing them on sorrowful days, yes. but in any case, so that was all of my stuff. Now <laughs> the big mouth is finally getting to you. <laughs> I'm so rude. No. Anyway, I just wanted to share everything, That's you know, fine. That's fine. It's nice to share. Yeah. This I got rejuvenated from that day, Sunday off and time with my family, you know, that kind of thing. So anyway, a lot of we don't do a lot of socializing lately because of COVID. So this is like our our little social hour here after the rosary. We have a little bit to it really is. of what we get out of the rosary. Well, today's reading is um, Luke nine forty six fifty, and and it brings it kind of ties in with the third joyful mystery where it says. Jesus entered the world in poverty to teach the lesson of detachment from earthly things. Um, the way that Jesus came in the world, it's, it's, it's very humbling. Um, right. Oh, he didn't come in, 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 in gold and armors and with, um, right. He, he came very humble and, you know, he wants us in, in today's reading, he, he talks about humility and how he wants us to be humble, like a, like a little child. He wants us to be like a child. He said, look at this child. And he put it in front of the, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the disciples. Love this child. Take care of this child. And that's like you're taking care of me. Whatever you do want to, right. goes back to the love. You know, love. Love everybody. We need to not be envious and jealous. The second part of the reading, it says, you know, um, John John was being upset because this, I guess somebody was healing, you know, right. healing people from demons. And, you know, he was healing the demon possessed. And John's like, wait a minute, you can't do that. You got to stop doing that because, you know, you're not, you're not with us. You're not our father. Right. You're not following Jesus. And Jesus is like, don't, don't tell him to stop. Well, right. You know, they're not doing anything against you. They are. They are healing. They are doing good. So don't be, you know, don't tell them to stop, you know. And I forgot exactly the saying in there, but it was like, we do that sometimes. We're envious. We're jealous. We're trying to do something and we see somebody else getting there before we do. Or, or, or we need to forget that. We need to think of, we need to be humble. Humble means brought to the earth. Humble means brought to the earth. We need to, we need to bring down our pride. We need to bring down our selfishness. We need to bring down, we need to die of self. That's right. That's right. That's what we need to do. And that's what I'm saying, how you keep me rooted in the liturgy and in the, the energy of the church is through the liturgy and why it's so important. And you've been very focused on humility 
all the lessons. People think, oh, the church is just, but the church is brilliance. The Holy Spirit is working through that liturgy and why you need to tap into that. So anyway, go ahead. That's that you did not to. Yeah, and also, um, you know, um, how important it is to help. You know, because when Mary was pregnant, she went to look for a place to have Jesus. You yes. know, that, that, that night in Bethlehem, Mary and Joseph needed help. How do I respond when someone asks me for help? Am I willing to go the extra mile? Mary and Joseph allowed Jesus to come to us. God, God now awaits our yes to allow him to come to others. May we share his childlike love, his gracious joy, and his gentle care with all we meet. Re remembering, that, remembering that we're Christ to be born in a thousand stables, that were Christ to be born in a thousand stables. It would be of no avail if he were not born in our hearts. So, you know, he, he counts on us. Yes. He counts on us now. And um, the last part over here at the end, it says, um, uh, what is it? We are his flesh. We are his yes. the, we are the mystical body of Christ. Through the church, we are the mystical body. And that's why when we take his flesh, we become him. Yes. We are supposed to become him. We need to look at greatness differently. Greatness is not what it is materialistic yeah, thing it's not great because how rich you are something different we need to talk to jesus today about the way you think about greatness do you frame it in the terms of power wealth or achievement or do you take on jesus's way of looking at it his values are different from the world's he just might redirect your thinking as he did with the disciples by helping you to view the least among you differently who knows? He may even help you change the way you view yourself. Jesus, teach me how to treasure the smallest and the least in your kingdom. Amen. And he right. will change the way we see ourselves and what we right. do. If we do everything we do 100% for his glory, like we're doing it for him, be it, be it putting up chairs in a church instead of being the main person talking. You know, you, right. we all have a role. We all have a right. role world and, and we should not be ashamed of because it's we shouldn't be ashamed because it's not as out there exactly. you know we need to be humble which again you you've been very focused on in your in your readings because that's that's part of the liturgy right now um and when and you said something um uh when when i was talking about materialism and the being great we a lot of people don't like the whole uh, make America the whole thing. Um, and what I see in that is let's return to traditional values such as not, not thinking about um, building wealth in, um, as we say, as we, I was talking about with the Kardashians, how it is a material, materialistic um, selfies, look at me, look at me. Um, it, if we are actually turning from that, um, that's making, to, in my mind, that's going to make America great because what this country was built on were uh, humble people daily building this country. Yes, there were rich and wealthy people and they were getting richer on building the, um, the, the, the um, railroads across America. There's a whole thing on how the rich men of this country built it. But most of them at that time were Christians and they, yes, they were getting rich on it. And, and you can look at that part, but when it is for the good of something, yes. um, then, you know, in my mind, that's, that's making, you know, yes, it's a, it's a vehicle for evil, but it's also a vehicle for good. And, and God can take anything um, meant for evil mm -hmm. and turn it for good. Yeah. So, yes. So, yeah, that's, um, that's big. We need to, you know, we need to go back. 
We need to yeah. take, we need to take a step back and die die a little more to self. You know, yeah. hey, you know, give up, give up a little something that you're doing that you know that God wouldn't approve of every day. If we just do that every day, just a little something, maybe we refrain from yelling at someone, or maybe we refrain from saying a curse word that comes yeah. easily in our mouths. Um, you know, we're so easily when we're around people that all they do is curse it, some the culture, you know, it's, it's, it's who you surround yourself with guard your mind, guard your ears, what you hear, what you see, guard, guard your eyes, your mouth guard. Let's guard ourselves because we are, we are to be God's holy temple. We yes. are to speak Christ, live Christ and be Christ to the world. We need to and when and, and when we use our tongue, we are forming words, and that's why we have to guard our tongue. You know, the Bible says guarding our tongue, and that which is the, very hard. That's one of the hardest things to do because you don't realize how hurtful you can be, how you can do all of the Ten Commandments yeah. in in one paragraph. You can do my mom. My mom shared. Um, a thing about how words were hurting her and I some things that she had said were were real made me angry and um apparently I said words I don't even know what she was talking about I was just so indignant and prideful like you know annoyed at her whatever she said my mind well whatever she said so I was responding to that and then she was hurt by those words and I look back now and I think, why couldn't I, you know, she and was getting so difficult at the end, was was so hard at the end because she, her world was getting smaller and smaller and she was focusing everything and everything on me, you know what I mean? Because I was yeah. the one there, yeah. you know, and, um, you know, so it, 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 so that's what comes to me um, now when I think guard my tongue because I, and I do that with my kids. It's, it's hard because I'm still teaching them. I'm still doing my job as a mother and a parent to guide them in some indirect way or whatever to help them to understand this culture yes. because everything you're talking about when you're immersed, guard the people around you because this culture, there's so much materialism, they, you know, all of that. So when you're saying that guarding and everything you're talking about is, is uh, we are immersed in a culture of selfishness, of, you know, envy. We need of healing in this world. We need to pray for healing in this world. The only way to heal this world is by praying for prayer. healing and and by bringing Christ more into little it. ways, little bit, one person at a time, just yeah. like Mother Teresa says, one exactly, day, you can't, you can't expect to change everything. You just need to start somewhere, exactly. start somewhere, start with little changes in your day and little changes in your regular habit, you know, and then little by little, it'll become a part of you. The ripple effect. Yeah. Dominoes. Yeah gets to people the domino or ripple effect gets to others so what you're saying is this world is filled do your little bit that will ripple which which during a lot of the ndes they talk they talk about i uh when i stood before god and saw the, the my life i saw each incident and how it affected everyone around me you know because we are we have boundaries in this in these bodies and we can't know what someone's thinking on the other side apparently during nde these at, at least during the time of these ndes they can understand everything that ha that's happening around them they don't have bodies but they can understand everything every soul that's around them and when they do their review of life they see how every decision they made hurt someone. They feel the pain of the other person. So these that's why I love these NDEs because it's like, it's like I need to guard my words because I'm going to feel every single thing that my tongue said to my mother, to anyone in my life, how it affected them. And I will see the ripples of that. So when you say change a little tiny thing, you that is changing the world. Yes. Amen. 
Amen. So may the Lord bless you all and keep you. May the Lord let his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you all kindly, give you peace and love and endurance and perseverance and change. And and humility. Humility. Amen. And Amen. Out there. Amen. Yes. So we'll see you all later at 3 o'clock if you want to come join for 15 minutes. It's very short. The Divine Mercy. And if not, we'll see you tomorrow, God willing, at 9 o'clock for the Rosary again. Love you all. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.